Watch up, everybody. Right, that was the uh, intro that I decided on. Um, today is Watch Day, right? Sexy Jay turns to Watch Day Day. And we have another unboxing. This is uh, one of my favorite brands called Manta. I honestly kind of went through the scissoring part of it because that was not exciting. And boom. And that is my personal info on it. I'll get rid of this paper. It does have the price on it. Um, I know people usually work, uh, do wonder about the price. So the price of this watch is... Actually, I'll let you guys see the watch first and uh, guess the price. I will tell you guys the price eventually. So this is from a brand called Monta. And they are based in the United States, actually. And uh, they make their watches in Switzerland because that's where watches should be made. Says a lot of people. Although there are a lot of great watches coming from Japan, coming from Germany, and so forth. Okay, we have all of this packaging. And we have the box. The Monta box, right? Okay. So hopefully... There's just so much cardboard. I'm gonna throw these away and recycle them, of course, because I'm environmentally conscious. Okay, so let's get right to it. So this is a from a brand called Manta, and this was a limited edition watch, special edition watch. And uh, wow, and we have more packaging. Actually, I should not throw this out because I like collecting these boxes. And that's their logo, which I think is pretty stylish. I have no idea where the logo is from, or like what kind of motif they had, but that's the logo. Remove that as well. And do all uh, watches come in boxes like this? Well, pretty much, right? This is actually on the smaller side. Um, their box got smaller, just so, for comparison. <laughs> that used to be their old box. So the box actually got more compact, but watch collectors really like having the box, by the way. And if you're ever trying to buy a watch and you want to keep it for future resale purposes, do hold on to the box and the papers because they will have a tremendous impact on the uh, price and value of the watch. Anyway, here we go. Okay, that's actually, that's probably more visible. And voila! Right, that's the French way to say things. And it is a beautiful watch. Uh, it's a beautiful color. And uh, what do you guys think the price is? I will tell you guys in like a second. But let me just give you a little bit of the background on this. Uh, this is from a brand named Monta. I love this brand. I'm actually wearing a Monta watch right now. It's one of my favorite watches. And they came out with this limited edition around the early this year. I think spring-ish, right? And this color, which I think they call turquoise. But a lot of people call it Tiffany Blue. Because uh, Tiffany Blue has been a very, very hot color in the watch industry the past few years. In fact, um, Rolex came out with a Tiffany Blue Oyster Perpetual. I think about two years ago, and they discontinued it after like a year. So the Oyster Perpetual, if I remember correctly, the retail price is like seven, eight thousand dollars But now the resale price is like, well, it depends where you look, but the highest I've seen was like $58,000. I don't think it's actually that high for the street price. It's like, I think the retail uh, was um, 8000 and I think the normal street price these days is like twenty to 30000 So crazy price jump and crazy popular. There's also a watch uh, by Patek Philippe. But I'll call the Nautilus, which was also this color-ish. So everything the in the watch world, the Tiffany blue has been like the it color. And is Monta following that trend? Maybe, I don't know. But this is a beautiful watch. And let me just get right to the sticker peeling because so pretty. Right, um, because that's what I kept these stickers on for. So right here, I'm going to first take the, uh, actually whatever sticker comes off first, really. And let me shut up for a second. Because I love that sound. Right. And then, ha, that's the one I wanted to do the most. Right, because now the beautiful dial is visible. And look at the color there. And let me remove more of the stickers. There are actually a lot of stickers. Because they put it on like every facet of the watch so that it doesn't get scratched on the way. And especially for a watch like this of uh, this caliber, this level of finishing, and finishing is what they call it in watches when they, uh, it's what it sounds like. How well did they do the final treatment on the surface of the watch, right? Um, whether it's polishing, whether it's, uh, well, there are a lot of types of finish you could have. Polishing would mean uh, you make it shiny, like this part right here, it's highly polished, right? Um, you could also have it um, a blasted finish, which is more of a matte finish and like not so shiny. And there are a lot of other finishes. There are a lot of plastics. Okay. So. And this. And every Monta watch, by the way. 
Uh, now, comes with this adjustable clasp, which I think is a really cool thing. And I will show you guys what that means. So your wrist swells and shrinks as, let me see if there's any other plastic. Your wrist swells and shrinks throughout the day uh, because of the temperature, right? And so uh, you might not have a, as much of a snug fit. So obviously if you have a watch, let me put the monitor down for a second. If you have a watch on like a leather or a rubber strap, it doesn't fit, you just like change the hole, right? You just put it on a different hole. But with a metal bracelet, you can't easily do that. So what Monta did was they came up with this cool system, which I will demonstrate here, in which you see like this part of it, this part of the clasp, I can change it and slide it, right? So I can lengthen it, lengthen, and I can shorten it. So which is a uh, standard part of every Monta watch, which I find to be really cool. And hold on guys, this little piece of tape is going to bother me if I don't take it out. Okay. I've taken it all out and honestly, hold up. Let me make this short as possible. Although I'm going to have to adjust this anyway because I have tiny, tiny wrists. Okay, there we go. Uh, the watch proper, I'll show you here. That's the watch. And that angle too, although I'm pretty sure we're gonna use primarily these angles. Okay, it's a beautiful watch. And if you see here that the uh, markers are highly, highly polished inside. They're filled with what's called loom, which means they glow in the dark, right? And the bezel, so that's the outer part, is also highly mirror polished. So if I were to wipe this down, you can see like reflections and things. And I love the way they make this uh, the watches. As I said, I have another monitor because on these sides, right, on the even the bracelet, if you um, take a look, actually, let me open the bracelet so it's easier to see. Okay, these are very comfortable. Like you see how these like let's see, these like links just like stack on top of each other. That's called a fully articulating bracelet. What does that mean? It's just super comfortable. Very comfortable, very flexible, very supple is the word that they use. And But the main deal here is the dial in this beautiful color, uh, which comes off really nicely with the sizing here and the hour markers, like I said before, uh, catch light very well as well. Um, so if you guys care about the specs, it says it's 150 meters water resistant, which I think is like the world record for scuba diving. So if you're a world record scuba diver, you could wear this to your world record and this be fine. Although I don't know why you would wear a watch like this to diving. You can't see the case back too well on this one, but that is the case back. It is a standard, uh, I believe it's an ETA movement, ETA movement, but I'm not gonna get too watch nerd today. All I want to talk about is how pretty this watch is. So it's a very beautiful watch in my opinion and according to a lot of people's opinions as well. Uh, let me put it on my wrist though. Put this down for a sec. So I got this watch because um, it came out limited edition and the price was, anybody guess? It was $1,760, $1,760, which you may say, isn't that a lot for a watch? Sexy J, I don't think you're that rich. That is true, I am not that rich. But first of all, $1,760, although it is a very significant amount of money, is, uh, let's, let's show you a wrist shot there. Okay, you see like the legs overhang. That is a significant amount of money, sure. But um, number one, for the quality of a Monta watch, I would honestly say it is one of the better deals in the watch industry that I know of at the moment. Uh, this level of materials and finishing, design, uh, the dimensions, the thought process they put into it, and the customer service, all of those things are like really, really good deals. So this one and the other brand I will talk about later, Christopher Ward, I think those are very, very uh, I don't want to say bargain, actually, because these are still very pricey items, but really, really uh, a good amount of package for the price. Yeah. Um, so this is a Monta. So I got this because it's a limited edition and they were going to come out with this color, which was, like I said, the super hot color in the watch industry. They also had plans of a pink version. And I honestly wanted the pink version more because that was a little bit more unique. And like, I like the color pink, despite the fact that I'm colorblind, which I'll get into later or not. Yeah. <laughs> So my first thought was like, this is my always excuse. Monta watches are pretty popular and limited editions in the watch world are very popular as well. And so they sell out. And a lot of times these watches kind of jump up crazy in the secondary market. Like I said, the Rolex OP with a very similar color scheme, although it is not identical, jumped up from 8,000 to about 30,000, right? Depending on when you checked on the secondary prices. So I was like, okay, 1760, if I can resell it, that's a possibility. But I knew in my heart that I wasn't gonna resell it. 
Like, I don't really do that, right? That was another way for me to justify these purchases because as you guys know from watching my uh, college blog and stuff, I got into Columbia and it's not quite the Columbia blue, but it's like similar enough that I was like, oh, this is when I was uh, planning to uh, apply to Columbia. If I get into Columbia, this will be a gift for myself to wear at Columbia, kind of rep the school colors. Another very good excuse, right? Um, the, so the first excuse, I could resell it. Second excuse, I could uh, wear as a college acceptance present for myself. Both of those are excuses for I want this pretty thing, right? Because at the end of the day, that's what I want watches for. I want this pretty thing, okay? So this is the uh, Monta Noble, actually, is the watch name. I didn't even give you guys that, right? It's the Monta Noble, and I love this brand. Let me actually put this down for a second and kind of chat with you guys while I adjust the bracelet here. I did make another video adjusting a bracelet like yesterday, but I did so terribly on it, and I got so angry while doing it, I might not end up using that. So I'll kind of go through that process right now. Um, so anyway, uh, this brand, Monta, and let me actually talk to you guys about like how I got into watches in the first place and just chat with you guys while I do this. I'm probably going to have to take out, let me see how many links I'm going to have to take out. Let's see, like three, at least three, probably more links, because my wrist is very, very small. Yeah. Anyway, um, so how did I get into watches? Is uh, hold on, let me move these out the way, so that the our hardworking side camera here can also see the watches and stuff. Oh, and I love how they give the uh, this is the watch polishing cloth. Right, similar to like what you would get on your glasses and stuff. Um, because the watches, actually, a lot of people go like, oh, you can't wipe your watch face, like the face of the watch, right? You can't wipe it with a tissue because you'll scratch it. You won't. Uh, most of the watches, the vast majority of watches that are above, like I would say, even two, $300, have sapphire crystal on the surface. So sapphire is really, really hard to scratch. So you're not really going to scratch that. But it's still nice to have this, right, polishing cloth, because the steel actually, especially if it's been highly polished like this, then you would want to not scratch it, right? Uh, so the polishing cloth, um, there are polishing cloths that can like buff out scratches, but you would want the original finishing from the manufacturer, right? Whether it's like a polishing here, and then this has a good mixture of polishing and brushed, brushed would mean like this more like, kind of like plain-ish surface. It's so like a good um, play of light if I hold it up here. So you can actually see, this is what I was talking about. You see there's polishing here, obviously, right? And then this is brushed and this little edge here, right, is polished. So you can get like these little um, diversity of um, finishings and dimensions and stuff, right? So it's very, very nice with the play of light. So I was gonna chat about how I got into watches, right? I get distracted very easily when I'm, um, when I have watches in my hand. So, um, I got into watches, like, really coincidentally. I was at the mall. I was near Christmas season. Oh, my God. These things unscrew so easily. So, yesterday, I had the watch. And, like, like I don't get paid to review these, but I was still going to say, like, mostly nice things about the watch, right? But the, the, the bracelet was just, like, not the best quality in terms of like how the components are fitting together and is that kind of like putting them on the salt maybe because yeah it's, it comes out like in seconds i might upload the video from yesterday just so you guys can compare like okay like my my good friend right uh is here helping me out and john's not gonna be in the video but like this is so much easier than yesterday yeah. you remember how much i was struggling Guys, I literally freaking broke one of my screwdrivers yesterday because it was so difficult. You see how easily that came out? Came out like butter. Butter, right? And um, again, I don't want to put any uh, companies on the spot, but you have a certain amount of expectation uh, when you put in a certain amount of money into the watches. So Monta watch brand is around, I think the lowest is like $1,700-ish at the moment. And their most expensive is like about 2000 So they're in that price range. So definitely a luxury good. So every part of the experience should be well, it should feel well made, right? So when I'm undoing these screws, they come out smooth, right? Like butter, right? I, although I don't like saying butter because like, I think that's just like me being kind of like 
like you know like uh when people like oh you're korean you must be into uh k-pop and stuff like that so ever since the bts song like butter i don't like saying that phrase anyway see how easy that is like so i was gonna make a quick video like maybe a five minute video yesterday about like how to uh resize bracelets especially when they're supposed to be easy like this one because they're just little screws and all you have to do is be able to use a screwdriver okay my fingers actually hurt a lot from yesterday because they're like raw from struggling with this for combined time of the 40 minutes actually because i was struggling with it after the video was done anyway everything should feel quality oh it was i don't want to put them on the spot <laughs> Right, they can figure out what it was by watching the other videos, but like, you know. Okay, so I took out uh, on one side, and I'm just going to check whether that was good enough. And it wasn't, right? Uh, you can see a little bit of hang here. I can't really see. I guess I'll just show you the front camera. Oh, you can see, like, like it's quite there, but you see it's like a little bit loose. Now, again, the good thing about Monta is that at this stage, where maybe I'm like, I don't want to take out more screws. Maybe I can just work with it by using the... Or you can, so this, yeah, that little difference. So maybe I could do that and make a difference. I think I'm going to wear this like every day for a while. I think I could take out one more link and I should be fine. I'm getting a little angry now at how easy this process was. Like, cause like, yeah, I don't want to be mean. And like, I do, I did honestly love the watches that I got yesterday. Um, and I think one of the issues was that they added a new-ish feature to the watch. And the new feature kind of caused a unforeseen issue in terms of the finishing or whatever it was. So, I'm not trolling their process, they're an independent brand. But, like, while I was making the video, I was like, yeah, guys, this should be pretty easy. I'm just really bad at it. I was trying to, like, be nice about it. Now I'm thinking, like, no, I'm not that terrible at screwdriving and stuff. Yeah. And every time I turn this, my fingers still hurt from yesterday. Did I jinx it? Is this screw not going to come undone? Maybe. Or is it just the fact that my fingers are super weak from yesterday? I think it's the latter. And yes, it is successfully turning. Okay, so I think I literally said, I'm going to talk to you guys about how I got into watches like seven minutes ago, and I just keep talking about like how angry I was yesterday. Okay, so it was like Christmas, the year was 2018, 2018, I think I do remember pretty well. Okay, so it was Christmas, and we were at the mall, uh, mall in Paramus, actually, Garden State Plaza, if you guys know that mall, and there they have a thing called Watch Station. Watch Station, they have a bunch of watches in there. And they're not like super high end. They're, they're like solid quality. And so at that time, I got four watches for $400, I think. Because it was like Christmas. I think I got two for myself, one for my brother and one for my mom. And I think it was my mom who like kind of like I had the idea. Oh, we should get ourselves some watches. And I was like, yeah, why not? Because, you know, it's Christmas. We deserve to have nice things. And... I think the watches I got were Armani watches, and they look nice, because Armani is a fashion brand, so they know about design. But they weren't the highest quality in terms of uh, materials and finishing, but they looked really nice. And that was the first time I got into the habit of wearing watches. I actually have one of them here. Um, it's right there. Yeah. Okay, that's my Armani. And it is a very nice looking watch, and you can see it here too. And for your Armani... I think this was like $140 or something. And I used to wear this like almost every day. Like it has a very slim design. Black and gold is a classic color combination, right? So I used to wear this like every day. You can see the crystals crack now. But this was my daily. And I got into habit of wearing watches. God. So after I got into habit of wearing watches and I was really into them. My, oh, please, please, please. That was not very professional, but it's okay. I'm just doing this in my room. My crew is uh, with me for the watch, not for the Sexy J Adventures. Watch the Adventures, they will join eventually, hopefully. Okay. And let me see the, how the new bracelet fits. Okay, perfect. Because that's like too tight right now. But too tight is perfect. That's what she said. Am I allowed to say those things on this channel? Oh, whatever, it's my channel. 
Okay, because I can adjust it and now it should be pretty much a perfect fit. Yes, there we go. That is awesome. So I can do a little wrist roll, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this on for the rest of this video. Um, actually, no. So I got into watches because like I got I got those like Christmas watches, right? Four watches, and I wore them every single day. This one, or this one, right? Every single day till the crystal cracked. And I even learned how to change batteries by taking out the screws. I don't know if you can see. This is missing a screw. Um, all right, here, right? Because. Uh, I was just unscrewing and the screws are really tiny, so I lost one of them because I was pretty bad at doing things. Yeah. So I got, uh, there's four watches and I got into a very good habit no, I, or a bad habit if you consider my financial situation, right? It's a lot of money to spend on watches. And I got into a habit of wearing them every day. And my mom, she said uh, she knew somebody who worked at Omega, right? So they, she could work out a pretty good deal in terms of the discount. And Omega starting price at the point at the model I was looking at was like about four thousand something dollars, right? So a discount would have been a significant amount of money, right? Because four thousand dollars, if you get a ten percent discount, that's like a four hundred dollars discount, obviously. So I was very um, interested in the idea, but I had just spent four hundred dollars on four watches. I can't spend four thousand dollars on one watch, right? So I thought about it for a very very long time. Of uh, which Omega watch should I get? I went through the Omega website and looked through, like spent days and days on um, looking through. And while doing that, I naturally got into watch publications, magazines, a uh, magazine called Hodinkee, which if I could take this magazine out without toppling everything over. Yeah, this is a, for example, it's a watch magazine, Hodinkee. Oh, this one's mirrored, Hodinkee. Yeah, uh, they're watch nerds, dream magazine, really. Or at least they used to be. I don't know how about these days. Anyway. So I went to watch meetups and stuff like that. But before that, I needed a proper watch. By proper watch, I mean the watches that watch nerds like. What do we like? We like things with gears. We like things where we can see the inner workings. So this is not the focus of our video today. For example, this is one of my favorite watches that I have. Gears, right? And let me sh shake it up and get it going. Yep. Okay, no battery, like just winding with springs and etc. And that's how the watch goes. Because these things are cool. Yeah, they're just cool. So I needed a watch nerd's watch. And I was thinking of getting the Omega and the year is now about 2019. And I had uh, been talking to this uh, person, right? And I thought we were kind of getting along. I thought maybe we would get a, we were gonna date maybe, right? But it didn't work out. It did not work out. And I was in a very not so great emotional state. And it was Valentine's Day. Right? And I was like, you know what? I don't need her. What I need is a nice watch because that's how my brain worked. And so I took what was a very significant amount of money at the time for me. And I went to the uh, watch dealership and I went and I got this watch, right? Hublot, uh, classic fusion blue, because I'm colorblind. The only color I can see is blue, right? Th there's more to the story than that, but today was supposed to be on the Bonta. So long story short, guys, I got into watches. It doesn't, it's not, not a special story um, because I bought four watches for Christmas one year. So I got into the habit of wearing watches and my mom was like, oh, we could get you a pretty good deal on a luxury high quality Omega watch. So that put the idea in my head and pretty much I ended up splurging on a very nice watch for my standards because I got my heart broken by a person who doesn't matter anymore because I'd rather have these than, yeah, because, yeah, whatever. She was, she was not cool. Okay. Um, yeah, and it kind of uh, built into like an obsession almost, a hobby. I used to, not anymore, I used to like go to bed every day and like, well, I still go to bed every day, but before I go to bed, I would read about watches with Inky Magazine, other magazines about watch releases for like an hour or two per day. So it's a really uh, been an all-encompassing hobby of mine. And I love this. Isn't that so pretty? Right. Um, I'm starting um, school, right? So like, I don't know. Do I want to? Wear this to Columbia every day, maybe. I mean, I, maybe, right? That'd be nice, okay. So, um, yeah, I'm rambling and stuff about my life. Uh, but yeah, that's how I got into watches. And I'm kind of excited uh, because we made the Sexy J YouTube channel because I wanted to share with you guys how to prepare yourself for college, how to get your future path, right? All of those things without having um, 
without having to spend tons of money on them, right? It might seem a little bit paradoxical, right? So you're like, oh, so you are trying to give education to people, right? And removing the barrier of wealth. And now you're going to talk about this like super expensive hobby relatively. Uh, well, this is one of my passions. And honestly, guys, like maybe because you don't spend money on SATs and college essays because of my channel, maybe you could buy nice watches, right? And it's just like an awesome hobby for me because like, for instance, like uh, these like G-Shocks that I have, these are like $99 each or 110 and like I love them just as much as like my other watches, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's how I got into watches. I rambled on about. I'm going to get into like each of these because as I mentioned in the first video, which was shot yesterday with help of John, the, I don't know, he, he should get a title too, right? Oh, it could be John and Jay, right? But um, um, it's my channel, so, okay. So, um, yeah, uh, I, and I also love the international collaboration aspect of it. Like this was a uh, US made, uh, the Monte is US made and well, US designed and manufactured in Switzerland, right? And this is my other Monta, actually. I'll pull it up, pull up the two Montas so you can compare different sizes. I'm not gonna really talk too much about like the technical aspects or whatever, because this is just for people who are casually learning about watches just because they happen to be on my channel. Although if you guys want to talk about the, uh, technical things, Feel free to like shoot me a DM or whatever. We can like nerd out about it. Yeah. So anyway, I love watches and these are all from different parts of the world. As I mentioned in the other video, I have ones from Greece, Ireland with Chinese uh, heritage. That's an interesting mix, right? Um, we have from Japan. We have from Switzerland, obviously, right? We have a Netherlands, Sweden, Korea collab here as well, right? Uh, so those are awesome. The international community that's behind watches and just the fact that we are doing these things. Uh, we are um, going into watches just because we think the technology is cool because we think it's kind of awesome that human beings have the creativity and the ability to think of all of these things, right? So that's why I am into watches. And I'll get into all of these and like uh, more uh, because uh, I love talking about these things. As you guys could probably tell, this video is probably going to be super long. Good luck uh, for the editing team <laughs> cutting this down to a manageable um, setting. So let me conclude by just talking about Monta because I do love this brand and I do hope they they don't need my support. Like they're doing super well because they are like the watch enthusiasts, like dream brand. Like they listen to the community and they do the things that watch nerds want in a watch. Okay. Anyway, so this is um, my Monta SkyQuest, which I got originally from them. And this is the Monta Noble. And so the SkyQuest here on the right is called a GMT. It's a sportier watch. It tells the time and it's also 300 meters waterproof. So it's more supposed to be like a rugged feel. And the left side, the uh, Monte Noble in the special edition color is more of a dressy watch. It's slightly smaller in stature and it's supposed to be not quite a dress watch traditionally as you would wear it with a suit, but still a dressier option than the SkyQuest on the right. Now, are there any rules with watches anymore? Is there a rule like you have to wear your dress watch with a certain outfit? Not really, but that's still like technical categories. Well, these, yeah. And I really love Monta the brand, like, um, uh, cause uh, as you guys know, I also work at a, do you guys know? Did I tell you guys? I also work at a pub as a waiter because uh, I want to write and I want to get to do as many people as possible. And also I get paid to drink a little bit. Don't tell my boss, but you know, so I do that. And uh, I wear this Monta a lot to my job because it's 100 meters water resistant, the bezel ceramic, it's supposed to be pretty indestructible, right? So it's okay if I bang it around a little bit, although I try not to. And this is the watch that I got in like uh, one of those compliments on. They were literally like, one of the customers like, oh, a lot of people, like, is that a Rolex? The dimensions are pretty Rolex-like, but they're like, they also told me, you shouldn't wear a nice watch like that. It's like, why not? Because they, because then customers are going to think you're rich and not give you a good tip. I was like, huh, interesting, right? So, Almonta, good job. You guys have, um, made watches that look nice enough. I can't get good tips anymore. I, I don't know, but that I guess is a, a weird way to the testament about the quality that is visible and evidence and also the super nice design that they have. And I've actually gotten this watch, the, the one on the left, right? I got this about two weeks ago and I've been wanting to wear it like every day, but I needed to make this video of the unboxing and especially the whole taking off the stickers. So I have to wait until today. Finally, I made the video. So I'm going to wear it now. And uh, what time is it? I set the time here. Oh, wow. I have a lesson in like five minutes. So I'm going to get going, guys. Today was uh, me rambling on watches again. And we'll kind of plan out more content in terms of like today's topic is blah. Or I might just go through my daily watches. It's my channel. I'll do what I want. Because for Sexy J, I'll do whatever you guys need to study. For Watch J, you guys will watch me be a watch nerd, guys. So um, that's it for today, guys. Um, 
I said, uh, watch out, right? In the intro. I, ah, I came with a closing. You guys like it or not? I don't know, right? Watch out, guys, for Watch Jay. Bye-bye. Peace.